Good evening, everyone. So the fish have arrived. Look at that. The jade bird fish have arrived. We've got two boxes um, and we're about to open them up. But I've got to check the instructions to make sure I do it in the safest manner possible. The children have been very eager and already started getting into that box. <laughs> and I need to try and get them to be patient so that we can follow the instructions. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so this is the email I received from Aussie Fish yesterday. It says, your order is being sent today via Star Trek Courier and should be delivered on Wednesday, which is today. Um, so remember these fish are sedated. Follow the unpacking procedure and they should be fine. Hi. There's the tracking number. And now it's got, upon receiving your fish, please follow the unpacking procedure carefully. You can find a copy of the following page at this website here. The unpacking instructions must be followed to ensure good survival of your fingerlings. We will not be responsible for replacing fish that die because of improper unpacking. The fish may look unwell when you open the box. This is normal after extended shipping. There is no need to panic. Unpacking them quickly is the worst thing to do as they may have a buildup of CO2 in their blood which cannot escape. This needs to be released slowly. It is important to keep the oxygen levels high during this process. An air stone placed in the box is strongly recommended. If the fish is still breathing in the bag, it should survive the transition to your tank if the unpacking is done properly. This is still the case for your fish are breathing but upside down in the bag. If you have any issue with the unpacking, please contact us immediately. If there are more than 10 fish before unpacking, please take a photo and send a copy in an email. So that's from Richard, the operation manager of Aussie Fish. So yes, okay, so let's look at the instruction page. Okay, so this is the Aussie Fish page that they've taken me to. It's on transporting and releasing your fingerlings. When you are taking a, the fingerlings home, they will be packed in a heavy-duty styrene air freight box. This is to help keep your fingerlings cool. You should also do everything you can to keep them cool. Do not leave the box in the sun. Do not leave the box in a parked vehicle in the sun. Do not place the box in a cool room as this will be too cold. Do not open the bag until you are ready to release the fish. The fingerlings are packed in a plastic bag containing about 10 litres of water and, inf and inflated with pure oxygen. If you open the bag, you will lose the pure oxygen. The fish cannot survive long without it. Your fingerlings will survive for up to 48 hours. However, they, when they are packed, it is understood that they will be released that day. If you need to have the fingerlings held in the box for longer than this, you should be advised at the time of ordering. Releasing your fish into the dam. We're not actually putting them into a dam, so we don't need to do that. We're putting them into a fish tank. So we need to carefully open the lid. And Matthew, this does not mean that you start doing now. You wait until we've read all of the instructions. Matthew is very eager to get into the box. You may continue taking the tape off if you like. Just don't lift the lid yet. You can watch, Jonathan. So carefully open the lid so that you don't puncture the bag. Open the lid slowly to let in just a little light at first. Sudden bright light will frighten the fingerlings and add to their stress. After a couple of minutes, remove the rubber band from the bag and slip the bag out of the box, allowing the fingerlings and their water to remain in the box. If available, place an air stone in the box as this will aid recovery and it is recommended that an air stone is put into the box. Allow the fingerlings to swim around in the box for about a minute, no longer. Then add a couple of litres from your tank into the box using a jug or similar container. Wait another minute or two and add another couple of litres. Continue this process for about 10 minutes until the box is full. Okay, once the box is full, place a small amount of fish in the destination tank. Observe these fish for several minutes. 
If these fish are all right and swimming normally after several minutes, add the remaining fish. Do not feed the fish until the following day. The temperature is the main reason for slowly mixing the water. Another reason for the above mixing process is when your fingerlings have been held in a bag for an extended length of time, this causes a level of carbon dioxide to build up in the packing water. In the presence of high oxygen, the fingerlings can survive the high concentration of carbon dioxide, but they may go into shock if they are added too quickly to the water that has normal level of oxygen. Therefore, the mixing process should be followed whenever fish are being held in a bag for more than six hours. Okay, so there's some more information on here that we can look into, but we can look at that later, and I have actually read it all before in the past. So, next step. Um, not yet, we'll have to make sure we've got a jug ready and ready to go. So we'll be back in a minute. The helper, well helpers actually, because Jonathan wants to help as well, is about to open the box, bo box slightly, just to let a little bit of light in. Do you see the little fishies? Oh, they don't look real happy in there, do they? Some look like they're But dead. they've had a bit of a stressful trip. I think some are dead. No, I don't think there'll be too many that are dead. There's still, there might be a few. It's possible, but we'll get there. Those ones seem to be stuck still. So you're going to open this box too, Matthew? Just a little bit. And we've got something on it to actually hold it down so it's not going to go anywhere. You get blown away by the wind because it's a bit windy today. Oh yeah, I think we've lost a few of those ones. Not our fault, bro. No, no. And, and that happens. Although, I've never actually lost them before. But we'll be back in a few minutes once they've had a chance to adjust to this little amount of light and then we'll add some water in. The boys are very excited. <laughs> very yeah, excited. To, you're, going to, um, you're going to take the rubber bands off so yes. and then you're going yes. to pour the bag out into the box. That's right. That's and the next step, isn't it? Do a jug into it mm -hmm. until the box is full. That's right. And we've got that aeration stone here all ready to go. I just got to let them. Stone. Yep. Yeah. Just got to let the fish adjust to the light a bit first because it's going to create a lot of stress on their system. But yeah, so we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we've taken the lids off the bags and just going to let them. Float around in there for a little bit. We'll take these. Are they talking about food? We'll take the bags of fish food out. So we'll put those bags over the so that it's lining the box. Ah, there. Right. There's the cable tie. It's not a cable tie, it's just a rubber band. Rubber band. So there are a few fish that are definitely not looking happy. So I I'm going to want to get these rubber bands off it as quickly as I can and add in the air stones. So I've got some air stones here with my solar energizer and hopefully it doesn't go flat. So we're going to open these up and I'll try and put you in a position so you can see what's going on. Can I put the glitter in? Yeah, we don't do that just yet, do we? No, we get, we get the cable tie off and the bag out, I think. Oh, that's a problem. I've got too much water going into the fish tank. Yeah. I've just... I've just put an extra pump in the fish tank and there's just way too much, you can't even see it. There's way too much water going in there. So I'm going to have to fix that quickly, but I've got to get these fish opened and getting some air stains in there first. So I've got to focus on what, just unplug the power on that pump in a minute. I've got the power point just here. Now, were we supposed to just let it into the box, weren't we? Yeah. And then you were supposed to 
from the box up with water in the tank. So, and make sure none of those little fish are caught in the corners. corners. Had that happen before. And they died, didn't they? Uh, no, they didn't. I'm pretty sure they were okay. So I want to do this is so that it's as stress free on the fish as possible. This is going to be a bit of a challenge. Uh, yeah, a lot of them are not looking happy at all. They're all still. Almost. But the back thing is moving. Should I put the water in now? No, you need to let it aerate a bit first. Just got to make sure these fish in the corner are underwater. Not that one's not underwater. It's flying up the they were going into water. They're going to have double air stones for a little while because I've only got the two. I'll just pump back in. The mouths are in the air. Yeah, it's because they're trying to get oxygen. So this is signs of oxygen deprivation that you're seeing in the fish at the moment. So their face is going up and then down, up and down. And it's probably just because it's such a hot day today. And unfortunately I wasn't home when they were delivered. So it makes it a bit hard on the fish. But I'm lucky that they got delivered today. Hey, they all seem to be alive. It would have been a lot worse tomorrow. And I have had them take a lot longer to be delivered, so... And I got a phone call from Nipswich today saying, Your fish are here. They're not supposed to be here. What's your address? So that was kind of interesting. I thought I was going to have to make a trip into Nipswich to pick them up. But no, they managed to... Oh, oh, they're stuck in the corners. They managed to get them delivered so here by lunchtime, which I'm really pleased with. So right. The corners, Mom. I'll kind of gently try and dispel it. Do they have sharp scales? Oh, not at this point. They're only babies. They're okay. They're swimming into the corners because that's where they like to be. I'm not sure if I can turn my bubblers up any further, but I'm going to try. <laughs> no, I think that's the highest my bubble will go. Okay, don't don't touch them too much. They'll they'll figure it out. They're nice and soft. I, I may lose a fluke few, but at least I've got the air stones now that I can use. Although one's not working half as well as the other one. That one. That one's working very well. Yeah, that one's working really well. Hey, this that one's the not bottom. working as well. What I could have done is put both fish into the same box, but it's probably better this way. So we got 200 fish why this time because we're planning on separating them over the two, over two systems at least, maybe three. And you do get a, a you do oh, lose some. Baby. Jonathan, please don't climb on that. You're likely to break the box, buddy. Go get a stool if you want to stand up and look. Okay, so I need to go deal with the fish pump, the pump now. Um, so I'll be back and show you the progress on the fish shortly. Okay, so the fish have been floating around, swimming around in there. Some of them are floating, unfortunately. But they've been swimming around in there for a little while. And my health has just gone to go play chess. So I'm going to get... Oh... What I did want to do first was actually do some water tests of the water in this, in the boxes before I actually add water from my system into it, just so that I can actually see. And my helper was just getting his phone so that he could actually record it on his phone and realise that his chess game had started. So that's why he hasn't done the water tests, which is a bit unfortunate, so I'm going to collect the water. So the, the temperature difference is a big issue for the fish, um, but so is a difference in pH. Um, it can be a very large issue. So. I'll just get some water and I'll do the tests afterwards. 
because the main thing is that I start adding this water into the actual system, into the, in the little fishes, and let them acclimatise to it. <coughs> so I'll need to add a couple of uh, a couple of jugs. I think it's a jug every minute or something. So get this and hopefully not upset the fish too much. Well, it's going to create a lot of movement in the water. So hopefully that doesn't disturb them too badly. I think the temperature is fairly similar in the two, so in the boxes as well as in my actual system. that in without disturbing the fish. Oh dear. <coughs> so my little aerators are still going well. The fish definitely seem to congregate in the corners and it's probably a safety issue that they feel safe in the corners because they probably feel very exposed. Which is, I'll be back soon. Okay, so I've already put another another jug of water in there, and I've popped a couple of pipes in there. Just like I've got something to hide in. Jade perch are quite shy, shy fish, and it is really difficult to actually get this water in. Are jade perch? Yeah, these are jade perch. It said that they were finger rings. Yeah. Fingerling is a baby fish. Oh. See, this is all part of Matthew's education. So he's learning all about the fingerlings and the jade perch and how to look after them. That bit of pipe didn't quite work so well. It's really quite difficult to pour the water in without disturbing the fish badly. Wow. The fish are loving the pipes though. They're swimming in and out of them, hiding around them, swimming over the top of them. Oh, I've got my camera angle all wrong, don't I? I'm having a bit of a problem with my tripod actually. We lost a few bits for it and it's being held together with a tissue because <laughs> the, um, the actual part that's supposed to hold the phone in place so it doesn't come flying out of the tripod has been lost by one of my little helpers. But you don't want to discourage the little helpers. Which... I'm probably inclined to get a little bit cross and a little bit cranky sometimes, which I need to learn not to. I need to be a lot more patient. <laughs> Definitely one of the air stones is working a lot better than the other one. system when it's in full sun. They're in the shade at the moment. It's moving this. I'll move my little solar panel. It's doing a maximum amount of sun that it can. Not on the time of day. I'm 
my little helpers has come back. A little helper that should be having a nap. <coughs> it's probably just about time to stick some more water in. The fish are all starting to look a lot happier. A lady beetle. Is there a lady beetle? Has a lady beetle fallen in there? Yes. Oh dear. They're a lot smaller than this, but it's a lot later in the season because we usually aim to get them around September. And one little ladybug that Jonathan spotted. Pop that back on the cucumbers. Lady beetles are fantastic at um, cleaning up aphids. And if you, they're attracted to cucumbers and anything in that cucurbit, I think it's called, family. Um, that ladybug is so cute. It is. It's a very cute ladybug. That, I'm actually feeling very encouraged by the way the fish are going. Ladybugs. <coughs> Those ladybugs are Matthews. Those ladybugs are Matthews, are they? Yeah. And when we pull up, up to a guy, they mm -hmm. fly. They fly, did they? I want to foam up to your guy. So yeah, most of the fish are doing quite well. You, they're really recovering quite nicely from their, their stressful journey. I do have one over there that's doing something weird. Up I've got him in here. I have there he is. I don't know what's up with him. He's got a wacky thing going on. But I'm, I'm quite pleased with how well they're all recovering. Something stung you? Well, you can go inside if you need to. There may have been a mosquito. Hence, the, which is another reason why we want to have the fish in the system as quickly as possible. Because we do have a fair few mosquitoes out here at the moment. Which is a bit of a problem. I'm pretty sure they're not actually from the aquaponics because the aquaponics has got moving water so it shouldn't be breeding mosquitoes. But once the fish are in there, if there are any mosquitoes in there, they'll clean them up quick smart. <coughs> so yes, very pleased with how well these guys are going. They are recovering very, very nicely. And that one that was swimming weird before seems to have stopped. And we've got one in here that's doing a little bit of a funny thing. But they all seem to be doing really, really well. I'm quite pleased. Can I see one fish doing funny things? Oh, Jonathan, you're gonna care. Don't, don't, don't touch that when you look. There's one doing funny things at the moment. Wow! Yeah, doing one. a funny spinny thing, isn't he? Yeah, Jenny, lift over and go on and go your water. Yeah. Well, we got another one over there doing some funny stuff. Sorry, I probably moved the camera too quick then. Really? Really? <laughs> Just be careful not to jiggle the box too much, buddy. Oh, I missed it. Uh, what happens? There you go, it's doing it again. What? It's just a fish doing a bit of a weird... What is it? That one is so, doing yeah. funny things. It's just being a bit weird. It's going funny. It's like my tripod's going funny. <coughs> and then... But we might get some more water and pop some more water in there. The air stains are all doing well. I might actually swap these over because this one is definitely doing better than the other one. Adorable. Oh, I 
would hug one. You can't really hug fish. Mm. And you can't really take fish for a walk either. Why? Because they need water. Oh. Well, how are you going to get a collar on them? Huh? You can't very well get a collar on them, can you? Good progress. Hey, you are when they're underwater. Oh, they're supposed to be underwater, buddy. I'm sad. Okay. And they're swimming through the pipes, aren't they? It's going into the air and going into the air. Mm hmm. And you see one just going to the air. They're not going in there yet. Oh, wax, wax, wax. Oh, yes. They show me the nap. Pipe. Yeah, they are. They're swimming in and out of the pipe, aren't they? They're enjoying the pipes. doing much in there. Huh? It's not doing much in there. Oh. I'm gonna put some more water in there so I can go yeah. underwater. Pop some more water in there now. And put some the more fish water. fish is definitely doing well. They've recovered nicely from their shock, from the stress of their travel journey. And they don't seem to be too worried about me putting water in. I'm trying not to disturb them too much, but it's really impossible to not disturb hey, them at all. There is <laughs> underwater when you put some more water in them. Yep. Wow! And a bag is in the water. I think this is actually the first time I've had an air stone in there when I've put that new fish come. Jonathan is having a lot of fun watching this and they're not hiding in that corner as much as they were now either. If anyone knows why the fish go around in circles like that I'd love to know. I know I've got a few friends that are fish lovers. I used to do a lot with, used to have my own tropical fish and tank my, set up, but not half as good as some of them. Nice. Catfish hey, Terry's mommy. got a really interesting group of people mommy. that get together and they've got, oh that fish tried to jump out then, did you see that? No. Nope. Did you see that the fish tried to jump out? No. Nope. It, was, it was over that side. I'll have to see if I can find it in the video. Mommy. Yes, Jonathan. Can you tell me that all over again? Yeah. Tell me the story. My friends and fishies have been called giants. They're a giant or the fish are giants? My friends are giants. Your friends are giant. My friends fishies are giants. Your friends fishies are giants? Yes. Wow. And I go giant now. Oh, fish trying to commit suicide over there, I'm sure of it. Okay. The fishy's mouth is a giant, is it? Yes, and it's just a fishy. Mm -hmm. I love watching fish swim, I really do. And have a duck in it. Yes, the plastic bag's in there. It's to make it easier to get them out. Although I think I might use the water jug to bucket them out. Oh, did you see that another fish tried to jump out? <laughs> yep. 
it went. Oh, there are box. And try to jump out. So we have to be careful that they don't jump out and land on the ground. My goodness. Yeah. Kamikaze fish. And the water did catch them. Yeah. Very cool, hey? Yeah, very cool. And it went flip flip to go in the water. Mm hmm. I missed that one, but I heard it. Did you see it? Nope. I think we're looking at the inside. You'll have to leave a comment at below if you um, have seen the fish try to jump out. Did, did the camera? Oh, the camera would have seen it. I'm trying to make it so I can see you as well as the fish. Can I see it? No, you can't see it. You're too short. And the whole idea is it's supposed to be seeing you. Huh? It's supposed to be seeing you and the fish. It isn't seeing me when it's seeing me a bit. Isn't it? Jonathan loves all animals. And I want all the fish to put it into the tank. Um, no, you can't really hold the fish and put them into the tank. I know. I'm a bit hesitant to put too much more water in. But it's probably time that I take some fish and put, the, put some fish into the actual aquaponic system. I know. Well, I and put the Although fish once into they're in it. there, I don't think I'm ever going to see them again. And I to put the fish in there. And that, yeah. In the jug. Yep, yeah. that's, that's my plan, buddy. Now! 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 Now? Yes! You're going to do it now? He's very excited. And I want to watch you. You want to watch me? Yep. Same thing to here. Uh, there's a bit of the tank that's in shade now. And I've got more water air, water going through the tank now. So let's see Mommy. if I can catch some fishies. Can I put some fishies into here? That's okay. my plan. No, you're not doing it, buddy. Me you. Yeah, I'm going to. I didn't catch very many, did I? <laughs> wow, there we go. I got a few that time. Yep. We got a few that time. Let's see if we can get them into the system. Now, never to see them again. No, that's not true. The water does actually clear up. I'm actually surprised it hasn't cleared up any more than it has. But I don't know that I'm going to see them again because they have all gone down to the bottom. Um, but that's why you should really have a um, a filtration, not filtration. Um, a swell filter. We've had a swell filter on in the past, and it's done a really good job of getting rid of some of the fine solids. Not yet. I'm just going to put some of the fish from both sides in there. Fish aren't great fans of being caught. I want to be let go. Is it singing me? Thank you. Put some more water in here. Technically, I'm supposed to actually watch those fish that I put in there, but I can't see them. Can I watch them? You can't see them, buddy. They're all gone. The only time we're going to see them again, I think, is when they had come up for dinner. And that won't be for a couple of days yet. Yeah, they don't get fed today. They'll get fed tomorrow, possibly. Well, probably. Jonathan, don't bounce the box, you'll make you'll hurt the fish. Oh buddy, if you want to watch me put them into there, you're gonna to have to get a stool from over there. 
so that you can see. So Jonathan's decided that he needs something to be able to make it so he can see what's happening. So he's gotten himself a little step ladder. Over there a bit further, buddy. Mummy's going to have to stand there to put the fish in, remember? So he's found a way to make it so that he can watch what's happening. <laughs> I love it how they think outside the square. You just be careful because that's robbly. Don't. You rock it, little rascal. You do need to be careful. Oh, he's such a little boy. Because you like to try and make it so mummy thinks you're going to hurt yourself? No, that's not why you do it, is it, buddy? You do it because it's fun. Okay, Let's see if I can get some more of these fish. They're not super excited about being caught. Ah, uh, it's three. <laughs> Maybe four. I'm not sure where my net is. Although I don't think that the net wouldn't work well in this. Anyway, <laughs> it, just, it just wouldn't work. <laughs> My phone would not cope well with the water in the fish tank. Not underwater, come on, go Come on, come on, I know water. You can actually see right through to the bottom. But at the moment it's not working all that well. And you can't and you can't see the fish. No, you can't see the fish. Oh, we'll see them when we feed them. Anyway. When we feed them, they'll come up. I'll try to make it so you can see me going in. Yeah. Until I go. Can I put the fish in right now? And and the food? Oh, they're not ready for food yet. Why not? Hopefully you'll get to see them going in. Up. There we go. Happy little fish. Up. Happy little fish. Happy little fish. Going under and the water. bag's probably just about light enough for now for me to be able to lift it up and tip it in. Yep. When I underwater. The sun can't get on them. <laughs> oh, there's one fish. I hope you can see stuff. Yeah. <laughs> get onto my channel. Get it on. Right. If you get onto my channel, get on. Get. Grabbing. My phone. Oh, you were asking them to subscribe to your channel, Jonathan. Yes. I'll leave a link to Jonathan's channel. Although Jonathan's channel is made for kids because it's made by a kid. <laughs> so. And so I can get onto your channel and subscribe your channel. And that was possibly a little adventurous. I should have taken some more water out. That's a bit heavy. 
sure no fish are in the corners. Oh, there's a fish. There we go. That's one box done. That's fish where, released. That's where another box. Yep, now for the other box. Get onto my channel and hit your watch. It's a good thing I videoed it then. Hey Jonathan. Yep. It means you can watch it later. I can't find my phone. So it's a bit difficult to catch these little guys, but there's so many of them. I, I think I might leave you over here. You Few planes going overhead. It's kind of interesting. We don't have that every day. Thank goodness, it's loud. Are known for being very shy. Are we happy to fly fishies? You be careful, Jonathan. You always be careful. You always be careful at the tank. What would be really nice is to have an underwater camera so that I can put it down there and have a look at what's happening with the fish. over there but he's finding something amusing. I don't even know if you can hear it. It's so windy today. Oh Jonathan making people. He was giggling at his brother. Because I 
can't see it. It's not going to add a huge amount of variation to the system, but every little bit helps. I'm playing wood on to you as well. Can you pick up your bag and put too many fishies in there? <laughs> Back a little bit before, so I don't want to do that again. And do it again. You want to do it again? Yeah. It's just a bit heavy before. No. Meanwhile, I still haven't checked the actual pH of the water <laughs> at the very beginning. And I haven't checked the pH of the system either. For the water testing okay so to start off with I'm just going to test the the pH of the system uh, so I'm just going to put three dots of the pH solution in this side is the water that came with the fish this is side is the existing system So unsurprisingly to me at least, the water that came with the fish, let's shake that up a bit, the water that came with the fish is quite low on the pH scale, there goes my chart. So it's actually probably a lot lower than the six. Because that's, that's just what happens when you've got the fish. My water is quite alkaline. So I'm not sure where you'd put that at the moment. It's probably around the 7.6. So I probably should use the high pH test on it to see where it's at. So I might just do that. Some fresh water. Ah, oh, the flies are driving me nuts here today. We just got a lot of flies and a lot of wind. A lot of wind and a lot of flies. So we've got the high pH test solution. I'm not surprised that it's very alkaline. So you need five drops of that. So there's a significant difference there and that would create quite a shock to the fish if they weren't acclimatized to it let's just combine that yeah i'd say that's it's probably around a 7.8 to 8. So yeah, it's, it's very alkaline. But that'll actually drift down as time goes by. And that's just part of having an aquaponics system. And that's not a problem at all. Not at all. Um, I'm not worried about that. Um, but let's check what the other levels are doing, shall we? take my other little vials out well this isn't the system this is actually so this is still water that came with the fish so let's check the oh, I've got little meat ants in my test box so I'm going to rearrange these 
So that's the pH. That's the ammonia. So the ammonia is that one. And I need eight drops of that. Maybe nine. And then we need eight drops of this one. My hands are a bit shaky today, sorry. It's been a, a bit of a long day actually. Shake that one up a bit. So the ammonia level Probably around between the zero to 0.25 parts per million. So that's that's okay. And let's have a look at the nitrite. So in nitrite is we need five drops of that. Now these guys haven't come from an aquaponic system, they're just from a fish farm. See, so there's no nitrite in the system, no, no nitrite in the water that's come from the, come with the fish. And I wouldn't be expecting that to be because it's not a, it's not aquaponics, it's just a fish farm. So 10 drops of the nitrite formula, the nitrite test solution, one. I should be probably counting them out loud and encouraging Jonathan to count with me because that's just a way to help him with his counting as well as Matthew with his oh, no. chemistry, etc. Uh, I know there's an ant on the box, isn't there? And that's going test solution two for the box. nitrate. That ant's gone down off your box. So you're going to count with me? One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the real beauty of this is it oh, actually... Yeah, yeah. I know, it's a big horrible meat ant. I don't even know what it's doing in the aquaponics. Oh no! I really don't want to get bitten by that, they're nasty. They hurt when they bite. So this is the water that came with the fish. And as expected... It's fine. No nitrate in the system. Now, and the reason there's nitrate in my system is because I've got bacteria living on my grow bed media and it's that bacteria is turning the ammonia from the fish into nitrite and then into nitrate so so yeah so that's um, so we tested the ph difference in the system yeah we don't like meat ants meat ants hurt not, they don't play nice. Um, not nice. Sit. I'll be back in a minute. So to save you from watching me put all the drops again, this is the levels from my system. So for everything, so you've got the pH is probably around a 7.8 to 8. The ammonia is probably around a 50 parts per million. Nitrate would be zero. Nitrite, sorry. Oh, I'm really doing that a hard way. And the nitrate would be, oh, probably up around the 40 parts per million. So, yeah. So, that's how the system is going at the moment. And I'm sure Matthew will do a test on the water again later on today. Um, but that's today's levels. And I'll catch you in the next video. I hope you've enjoyed watching the fish being released. And we'll see you next time.
Have a great one. Bless you.